Hello and a warm welcome back today on the bench or the 50 watt blah 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 monoblocks 807 monoblocks still trying to find out why this monoblock isn't amplifying <coughs> regarding the 500 watt uh, sorry regarding the 500 volt which should be here I remembered uh, vaguely that I changed that to a I think I just split it off somewhere else so there should only be about 360 volts that's correct however we've got a bit of an anomaly with the biasing and if I'll show I'll point you at the at the uh, meter turn it on right this has got no valves in it so it's got no active components apart from a few transistors on the um, face splitter so this is the bias voltage coming in and we've got minus 117 volts then we've got an 18 K resistor I'll take so I'm reading the other side of the 18 K and it goes down to minus 38 volts why if there's no current flowing through those resistors then the voltage should be 117 volts or near enough all the way through because there's nothing pulling current there is nothing i mean even a a, a bias um circuit well i sort of got to the bottom of the uh, bias problem this pot here is intermittent meaning that the bias jumps from about 30 minus 35 volts to about minus 22 18 volts which is not good that needs coming off taking apart either cleaning trying to fix or replacing all the other parts of the amp seems to be within spec although some of the readings are a bit off uh, like the constant current source feeding the cathode of the phase splitter is a little bit low at minus oh sorry no it's actually five volts according to the load line that i drew it should be more like eight volts so i'm just going to do a bit more work and then but i feel like we're at least getting there to take a pot apart or at least get the back off most of them have these four tabs and it's just a case of gently getting the screwdriver underneath there Leaving them up. Oops. Right, no, don't my fingers there, do we? It's a bit hard doing this round the camera as I keep moaning about. It's a little bit tight, that one. There we go. That's got that one. So that's that one, that one, and that one. Then let's get some pliers. Gently knee, knee them, uh, sorry, gently just pop them back. Don't want to be too cack handed at this because you don't want to snap them off, and metal will only bend so much before it breaks. Oh, these are quite tight. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Right, there we go. Right, that little plastic thing is just like a plastic ring in here. And as you can see, that's the pot. Oh, sorry, that's the wiper surface. Can't really see anything. A little bit of sort of pitting there and there at the ends of the travel but as you can see these old pots are far better built than your modern sort of thing like that just the surface area is bigger the wiper is more substantially 
built. I'm not going to take that one apart, but take my word for it. So yeah, a lot better. So what I'll do, I'll just use a little bit of uh, acetone or something like that. After just trying a little bit on the uh, plasticky stuff first, clean that up, and then we'll get that back in. Now I have this Fluke 25 monitoring the bias voltage. I have reinstalled the pot after cleaning it. And obviously we get now because I forgot. Well, I didn't forget. Yes, I did. All right, minus 21. That's a little bit low. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to set it high. Because <coughs> I don't want the uh, amp to run away. Mind you, it has got a protection circuit, so... Right, I can't remember exactly where it was supposed to be, but let's... Set it to about minus 28. Next, we need to stick in a... An AC signal. For God's sake. Oh, hold on. Before I get carried away, let's set the bias for the long tail per. That's at minus five. That's a little bit high. At some point, I'm going to go into like setting it all for the right. For the lowest THD and all the rest of it. This is a 10 turn prop so it'll take a little while to get up. Now that 6BL7 isn't pulling so much current, mind you, each triad is only pulling about 4 milliamps. So, right, let's bang some. Uh, AC in. Well, hopefully you can see that we're not out of the uh, woods yet because I've got an AC source going in, one kilohertz sine wave, and that's all we're getting out. And it should be a lot more than that. More investigation needed. Well, somebody hadn't quite. <coughs> that was just a connector, not quite screwed home. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going off there. We've got a bit of uh, jumping about, noisy sort of stuff. I think that's probably another connector ground type issue. Now we've got three volts, 3.4 volts RMS, less than 1% THD, everything's cushy. So at least it's all working. This is just a preliminary, which I couldn't say the other day, test. Let me just knock it down to 20 hertz. Three point three volts, so that's a really good frequency response. And let's knock it up. Frequency twenty kilohertz, and that's dropped a little bit, but loads less than one dB. That's three volts RMS. Right, and still less than one percent THD. Right. Now everything is working DC wise and AC wise, I need to dial it all in and then stick some music through it and then there's still quite a bit of work to go tidying it up. There we are another sunny day, bloody sun's coming up, getting bloody hotter, too hot to work in here already and it's only about 11 o'clock. Anyway, I dare say people in hotter countries than this will say, ah oh, this is now Got one working, set the DC conditions, everything's cushy. I'm now trying to do this one. So what I need to do is set the DC bias for the output stages. This is a little convoluted in that. Well, it, it, it is convoluted and it isn't. So we've got basically one main pot here. And I know this is a bit of bad design here, bad placement of things. We've got one pot here that adjusts the bias 
right from I don't know about minus 35 to about minus 22 say something like that and then we've got a couple of balancing pots here and here and are they no they're just single pots so what they do they just send more bias voltage to either side so basically if we turn it like this way the bias voltage will go over here if we turn it there more bias voltage will go over there i'll show you that in a little while first let's set the bias total bias and to do that i'm not going from ground to the cathode i'm going from the grid to the cathode because remember with a valve tube everything uh, voltage measurements current measurements is in relation to the cathode right jesus that's really low that's it it's jumping about a bit that was at minus 25 i still think there's, there's something wrong here because all i can do is adjust that to minus 28 volts right i'm going to point you at the uh, meter maybe try and be reasonably brief here because it's just sitting upon its arse precariously so that's one valve and basically what i did i just stuck whatever 807s i had in here right, i'm just going to do another one one moment to remove to do the put the leads on test leads without right you see that one's minus 29 so what i'm going to do now i'm going to move one of the probes from the grid of one valve to the cathode of another so what you see so now we're taking a differential measurement i'll show you what i mean So I've um, got one probe on one cathode, the other probe on the other cathode, so there's no ground connection. And the Fluke 25 can do this because there's a little bar graph at the bottom. So I'm just going to move this pot, you know those balancing pots? So ideally it wants to be at zero. It's not actually that far off, that's fine. Now I'm going to do the other two output valves try and do that without getting a belt right you see that one's a little bit more out I'm going the wrong way so now I'm getting there there right there now the back pair of 807s are in balance DC wise now let's go and take our <coughs> where do you call it again absolute bias and then I'm going to have a waffle about DC conditions again Jesus, there's so much heat coming off this thing. Right, oh for fuck's sake. We ought to be careful, we don't blast something out here. Right, there we go. Right. So you see our bias has gone down a little bit from the minus 28. It's only like gone down 3 millivolts DC, but that's bugger all. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the cathode current of each output valve. Just out of interest. Right, that's reading 3.8 volts. Because it's across a 100 ohm resistor, we just divide it by 100. So that is 30 milliamps-ish. Well, 38 milliamps, let's say, on that one. In there, that's the same. 
going to the front pair now. Oh, and that's the same. So these voles are pretty bang on match now that we're on it. And that one's not far off either. That's brilliant. Lastly, I'm going to measure the bias of the long tailed pair, and that should be at 8 volts. Uh, that's the 6BL7 long tailed pair. Trying to find the right thing. Like they're in the day, really, but I'm uh, going the wrong way. Yeah, that'll do. It's about right. Finally got them working. You've only got to turn them up like a tiny little bit and they're already too loud. And these are only on crap speakers, but then and again these are probably linear pots. And the and the big they take up a lot of space as well, so Right, well, still more work to do on them. At some point, I want to get me big monitor speakers from upstairs, really big bloody great things, 300 watt speakers, put these in the garden and crank them right up as loud as I can, just for a little while, just to see what the, um, how loud they go, really. And I don't know, yeah, just for the crack. Uh, so much to look forward to, eh?